and we're back for the final video this week with BTC sitting at $30,100. And surprisingly, the market didn't really react that much with the CPI data coming in yesterday. Now, if you guys missed it, CPI data came in at about 5.0 with the expected CPI year over year to come in about 5.1 down from 6. So a pretty good drop in inflation showing up right here. Bitcoin hasn't really responded that strongly. We did pump into it before the results actually came out and we've just been consolidating since. So we had a very long period of consolidation here about 22 days and then we pumped up and now we're consolidating again shortly before we either dump or pump. Now I would imagine since we already made the pump to the upside we're going to retest 32k as you guys already know I've been talking about this multiple times. 32k is going to prove to be very strong resistance three day you know we zoom out to the three day chart over here and we'll see you know just these moving averages we might even get a wick up to about 34k right there before we drop down I think this is going to be a very volatile area where people get trapped on their longs and we do dump towards the downside scaring people out of their positions because nothing goes straight up it just doesn't work that way and no matter how bullish people get here it's actually pretty bearish that they're getting that bullish because sentiment needs to flip sentiment can't stay on one side and be bullish no we need to redistribute shake people out and consolidate before we can get going on the next leg up now this is a pretty big leg if we measure this out this leg was about a 50 53% move 54 let's call it 55 and potentially a 65% move if we do end up getting to 32k so we need to see some kind of shakeout happen like we saw back here now this was a fake out to the downside before we pumped up and then we got a nice 23% shakeout to the downside now we can expect anywhere between 25 to 30% of a drop once we get to 32k so let's just measure that out that brings us to 15 20 Let's bring it to a nice medium between 20 and 30 because we don't really know what's going to happen. So let's just take the average of 20 and 30 because historically that's what BTC tends to do when it corrects. It drops between 20 to 30 percent. So a 25 percent drop would be about 24K and that would be a nice sized shakeout. And we might not even get something this deep. If things just get more bullish and bullish for BTC and we end up breaking above 32K, then that would change things. So you know, I do have one scenario that I'm favoring, which is the drop after we get to 32K. But on the flip side, if we get another scenario and we pump up above 32K, then I'd have to reevaluate because things would have changed. So right now, my idea is that, okay, you know, 32K is going to be very strong resistance. But the question is, where do we drop? So we're taking it piece by piece to see what can happen. Let's take a look at the DXY and see what it's doing. And as we can see here, it hasn't really done much. Yes, it's dropped, but it hasn't created a new low. It's actually just retesting the low. So this could potentially be a double bottom and we might get a bounce out of DXY for whatever reason. So something to watch out for. Now, if we do break down here and head lower, that would give reason for BTC to actually move on higher. So BTC probably going to tag that 32K area. Not going to be too surprised about that. Let's take a look at Ethereum as the Shanghai upgrade went live yesterday, I think. And Ethereum did pump a little bit off the news. We went from 18... 60 to about 1924 so again a pretty uneventful cpi release as well as a shanghai upgrade not much going on there we still have two thousand dollars to tap which i do think we're going to get to as we get to 32k on btc and then we'll have to wait and see as you guys know we have 2400 as a target but i don't know with btc coming up at 32k and ethereum coming up at 2k very significant resistance on both of them i think it's going to be hard for f to kind of break past that but yet to be seen, but that's currently what I'm eyeing with BTC and Ethereum being at the levels they're currently at. If we take a look at FBTC over here, we can see that it's found resistance, it's headed down, created a new low, so potentially we're going to head on lower here to the bottom of the range. On top of that, let's take a look at Bitcoin dominance as BTC dominance is actually surging up higher than it ever has in the past couple of years. Now this could potentially be a breakout but as you guys can see we did get to the same level last time in july of 2021 so potentially we're going to roll down here if we start breaking up above then we're potentially going to head to about 58 percent if we do actually end up continuing to rally to the upside and that's not going to be great for alts now speaking of alts alts continue to correct as usual we have our favorites here on the channel adam uh, tapped down here on the box and got the buyers coming in but if btc dominance does keep going up and up then you know you can continue the bleed to get down to about 2500 to even 1800 stats Adam USD is it breaking down or holding still we've got the triangle scenario and then we've got the 
downtrend break scenario we're looking for. So we haven't gotten either yet. And you can see the buyers are coming in. So we're getting a little bit of interest here on Adam. And if we can break above it and actually get above 12.3, that would be really bullish for Adam. So still waiting for Adam to do its thing. So far, it's all right. We're seeing even the bleed on the F pair here, which isn't looking too great. So we still have more room to the downside. I think alts need a little bit more time to do their thing. Looking at Polkadot as well, I'm hoping Polkadot has bled enough, but it looks like not quite yet. We got two wicks to the downside here. Uh, we still have potentially more downside to go here as well, about 12%. Dot USD looking really good. I, I like Dot USD a lot more than I like Adam, simply because we've broken out of the downtrend here and we're moving towards the upside. The next task for Dot to do here is to break above 6.6 hold above it and continuing to make that move to about 7.7 .7 and eventually breaking above to see if we can get to $10 by May. That's currently what I'm eyeing on Polkadot. Now, moving on to our last coin here, Luxo. Luxo has decided to chill out a little bit, which is good because I'm always trying to pick up more Luxo with any free cash flow I have. So Luxo giving us a little bit of a dip here, about 10.4. We said we could get a 10 to 15% correction. So we might be lucky to see 9.5 again. But the thing to remember about Luxo is that the mainnet article can come out at any time. So with that said, I expect when that happens, Luxo is simply going to break $12 and we're going to head to 18 So something to watch out for Luxo. There's high demand on this project. A lot of eyes. I'm seeing a lot of people talk about it more and more as the weeks pass. So we're getting a correction here on the ETH pair as well. If we can get a correction down to about 48000 I want to see that hold and we continue marching up on Luxo. But today's going to be kind of a short video. Not much to touch up on. Just want to give you guys a rundown of the market as I see it. And to give you guys a closing summary, I would say BTC to 32 k ETH to 2 k and then we'll reevaluate from there. But my bias is towards the downside. The alts need more time to kind of stew and to really get their moves going. We need to see BTC dominance drop. And then we'll see the alts starting to move out of all the alts I've covered on this channel. Luxo is my favorite by far. I don't think that's any secret. So I'll just keep covering the market for you guys as the weeks and days pass. So with that said, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.